I invited Yi Song from uh, Tsinghua University. Um, Yi Song has received his PhD from Beijing Institute of Technology in 2013, and he was a PhD student at uh, Texas uh, University of Texas Austin from uh, 2015 to 2018, and he's a uh, postdoc right now uh, or um, assistant researcher at Tsinghua University. And I got familiar with his uh, research at CICC, where he showed it, um, some ADC work, uh, which is using a cell-based approach similar to OpenFA SOC. So I was thinking this would be relevant to the uh, to our uh, analog working group and uh, to learn more about his research. So uh, Yi, please uh, take the stage, and uh, you can share your screen if you want. Okay. So can you can you see? Can you can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so let's start. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So, uh, good day, everyone. So, my name is Yi Zhong from uh, Tsinghua University, and today I'm very glad to be here and uh, introduce our work, uh, 80.2 to 80, uh, 81.1 uh, dB SNDR, uh, 24 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz bandwidth, with you based uh, uh, synthesized. Uh, uh, third sigma ADC with 105 dB as an SFDR in 28 nanometer CMOS process. And uh, today's talk is based on my work on this year's CSC. And here is the uh, self introduction. And uh, thanks uh, maybe for introducing me. And I, I'm, uh, the, I'm currently an uh, assistant uh, uh, research uh, fellow at Tsinghua University. And uh, uh, my uh, research interests include uh, time domain or something ADC. Uh, energy efficient biomedical sensor radar circuit and uh, today's topic high performance synthesizable ADC. And uh, this talk will organized as follows. And first, I will uh, briefly discuss the motivation and a few uh, prior work. And I I will then introduce our proposed synthesized flow and uh, methodology. And uh, then I will talk about the circuit Im implementation. After that, I will give you the measurement result and the conclusion will be mentioned in the end. And uh, as uh, uh, circuit designers, we know that up until today, the design of analog uh, mixed signal IC still remains full of manual efforts. Whether it is in schematic design or to layout, there are not much room for automation. And uh, 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 this makes analog design a very time consuming loop and the whole process must be repeated uh, even just for design migration. As we go into more advanced process, it will get worse because of the complicated design rules. It will greatly limit development productivity and keep its design cost high, which is economically undesirable. Uh, to this end, it has become more and more meaningful if we can have a automated analog IC design flow to, to reduce the time and cost of the process. In recent year, we are seeing an increased research in analog design automation tools. And one of the direction tries to develop the generic flow that can handle any analog, analog circuit. And one of the direction, uh, and, uh, however, uh, this approach must cope with the big challenge of analog design abstraction. So it will take a very long time to coverage. Another direction tries to develop uh, the template to uh, automate specific circuits, but for each new circuit, it need, it need a new template. And the template may not be portable, so there, and therefore it takes high effort to develop and maintain. So generally speaking, there are still much to be done in this research. But naturally, it will raise the question, and what can we do to do further improve the analog automation to make it more mature and users friendly? Then we realized so far, many efforts have only been focused on using algorithm to automate existing circuits. In other words, we keep the circuit on change and just works on the tool. What if we can also make innovation from a circuit perspective? That is, we can make new analog circuit design by nature more friendly to automation or synthesizable. This will greatly simplify the algorithm and therefore accelerate the automation development. And uh, this mindset brought forward the, interest, the interesting direction of using digital standard cell 
to design analog signal, mixed signal circuits. The key innovation is that by designing analog circuits in uh, a standard cell, uh, they got the potential to be treated in similar way like a uh, digital circuit. Therefore, uh, we can leverage many powerful digital tools to simplify the analog, to simplify the automated process. Uh, and with this motivation, many groups have made contributions to show interesting works like uh, PRLs, filters, uh, TDCs, and uh, data converters. Many designs even show grid performance comparable to uh, manual works like PRL and uh, TDCs. But still, among different circuit types, there is one that has a large room for improvement. It is the ADC. A key reason is that because the classic ADCs have many uh, analog blocks, and the classic ADCs are mostly analog, we know that. So they are not easy to be represented by digital, by standard cells and vulnerable to uh, automatic plays and rows. So generally, they require more spe uh, special attention. And uh, several early attempts on synthesized ADC designs have been reported recently. And here is the brief review. The stochastic splash ADC is, is first proposed by uh, Weavers and uh, Fami. And this idea is leveraging process variation to let random offsets of the comparator to be Gaussian distributed re re reference and get conversion through probability mapping. And this design requires no custom cells at all. And their comparators can be built from just NAND gates, making them highly portable. But the drawback is that they, they are quite power hungry because the large number of comparators and the quadruple increased comp complexities per bit also limit them to only low resolution usage. And Waters proposed a synthesized ADC based on MASH architecture to increase the resolution of the ADC. However, the augmented highly analog custom blocks such as OPAM, comparator, and the capacitors which restrict the design flexibility. Also, the ENOP is still uh, less than 10 bit. Another way to enhance the resolution is using SAR architecture, SAR architecture which is proposed by Seal and Garrick. It takes advantage of the SAR's in, in intrinsic digital friendly structure and making the synthesized flow to be portable and robust against uh, imper imperfections. However, a dedicated CAP compilers is needed for the DAC array, leading to more software complexity also, the resolution is still limited by 11-bit uh, enough. So VCO-based ADC, which is highly digital and uh, synthesized friendly, are naturally more compatible to synthesize compared with prior voltage domain ADC. Uh, ADC-based synthesized ADC using automatic place and rod tools is then proposed by Dr. Lee. However, this synthesized methodology cannot achieve high resolution due to two reasons. First is they are poor matching by automatic place and route tools. Also, the limited noise shaping capability results in a relatively low resolution. And maybe we will say we can build a higher order ADC to enhance the resolution. However, it still remains a lot of manual efforts to design a new ADC for different resolution or more broadly, we can say that for different specifications. So we will raise a question. So can we use only one universal library to synthesize ADCs for multiple specifications? And, uh, in this review, and uh, uh, from this review, we can also see that there are still much room for improvement in synthesized ADCs. So exists the synthesized ADC cannot demonstrate SNDR beyond seven, uh, 70 dB. It is not yet sufficient to meet the demand of many emerging applications such as accurate sensor nodes or biomedical circuits. So at least 10 to 20 dB uh, higher SNDR is highly desired, but it also makes automation even more challenging because high resolution ADC tends to be more analog intensive and more sensitive to non-ideality. 
To make the synthesized ADC more practical, we must answer the question, so can we further improve the resolution of the synthesized ATC to 80 to 90 dB SNDR? So how to make it? So here is what I will present today. So first I will talk about the proposed synthesized flow. So before we talk about our proposed synthesized flow and methodology, uh, we will firstly recall the general architecture of the first order noise shipping WCO-based ADC. It is consists of a WCO-based integrator, a, a phase domain quantizer, and a NAC. And uh, uh, in order to achieve a very high SQNR, a high uh, oversampling ratio, or we call OSR, is always demand, leading to limited uh, bandwidth of the ADC. And in order to achieve a uh, high OSR with a relative lower OSR, a general idea is to boost the noise shipping order. Here on the bottom here, we can see that with cascading another VCO, the ADC can achieve one additional noise shipping order. And more importantly, compared with the first order ADC, the extra blocks, including VCO, a phase quantizer, and a DAX can be shared with the same library of the first order ADC. In this case, by adding extra VCO and phase quantizer and a DAX cell, the noise shipping order can be extended from first order to a second order or even higher order in theory, providing a flexible trade off among resolution, bandwidth, and the power. This gave us an inspiration to propose a senior size flow that use only one universal uh, library to achieve multiple specifications of the ADC. So here is the detail of our proposed synthesized flow. So first, we select the architecture to realize the different performance of the ADC. In this work, we synthesize a first order visual based ADC and a second order visual based ADC using the proposed synthesized flow. And the HDL generation step converts the circuit from schematic level into gate level where our code. And this format can be processed by the digital automatic plate and rows tool. And uh, notably, this process only needs to be performed only one design. Other design with different performance specifications can be simply realized by directly editing the code to modify the ADC's parameters, such as the noise shipping order and uh, the number of the VCO stages. And the library modification steps augments the foundry standard cell libraries to improve the ADC's performance, which will be further explained in the next section. Analogs, analog custom cells is also added uh, into the library and both augmented digital standard cells and analog custom cells are then exported to add it to the standard cell library description fields. In the floor plan generation step, a simple floor plan file is written to define placement and uh, the placement boundaries uh, of the components. And uh, the floor plan file along, along with the modified library and the HDL files is then feed to a digital automatic plan and route tools or we call APR tools uh, to complete the layout. And in this work, we use Cadence Novus as APR tools. By sharing the one-time setup augmented uh, digital standard cell library and the custom uh, cell library, the first and the second order visual based ADC are automatically synthesized by the APR tools from gate level uh, Verilog code to uh, layout. And in summary, the proposed synthesis flow use one universal library to synthesize ADCs for multiple specifications. And these different specs can be simply realized by editing the code to modify the ADC parameters. Therefore, the proposed synthesis methodology greatly improves the design productivity, reduce the design cost, and shortens the product turnaround. And then I will talk about our proposed synthesized methodology. 
If we look closely, we can find that in the prior work, since there is no timing information, the inverter of the current control oscillator, or we call CCO, uh, the delay cell of the CCO are placed without any constraint by the APR tools. As a result, this paper, uh, uh, as a result, uh, the, prior, the prior works synthesized methodology introduced severe placement and routing mismatch. And uh, first, let's discuss the prior synthesized methodology of the CCO. And on the top is the schematic of the CCO and the uh, delay and the schematic of the delay cells. And for simplicity, only seven stage CCO's delay cells are shown here. And we use different color to represent different de delay cells. And on the bottom, we can see that in the prior work, since there is no timing information, the delay cells are placed without any constraint by APR tools, leading to severe placement mismatch. And obviously, due to this severe placement mismatch, a huge, a huge routing mismatch is then introduced. This placement and routing mismatch greatly limit the ADCs SNDR and SFIDR. In order to achieve a high resolution ADC, a better synthesized methodology is strongly needed. And in this work, we propose a template-based synthesized methodology. So let's just think about one question. So what we will do to achieve a high quality manually crafted CCO layout? So first we should manually complete the layout of the each delay cell, right? And then we can manually place each delay cell in group to improve cell to cell matching. And in our proposed methodology, this manual effort can be done by the APR tools. Instead of arbitrarily placing the delay cells and routing, we firstly synthesize each CCO delay cells in group based on our prior knowledge of CCO design to reduce the placement and the routing mismatch. And after that, the synthesized CCO delay cell is placed in a row with a special sequence of one, seven, two, six, three, five, four, which is shown on the right, side, right hand side. And uh, in this case, most of the cell to cell routing distance is the same. So as a result, the routing mismatch is further reduced. And uh, based on the simulation result, thanks to the template-based place and uh, route uh, methodology uh, we have proposed here, the linearity of the CCO is improved by uh, 17 dB compared with the methodology in prior work. And similar with CCO design, without any placement constraint in prior work, there are severe routing mismatch between deck cells. On the left-hand side is the schematic of the deck. And for simplicity, only seven stage C deck unit cells are shown here. And on the right-hand side, we can see that in prior work, since there is no timing information included, the delay cells are placed without any constraint by the APR tools leading to a systematic mismatch of 1.3% standard, standard derivation for a 20 Fender Fara unit, capacitor, unit capacitors due to the routing mismatch. And similar to CCO design, uh, this work firstly synthesized each converter, uh, uh, synthesized each inverter and uh, the capacitors in group. And after that, the synthesized CDAC, uh, CDAC elements are placed in a row. And in this case, the routing mismatch is greatly reduced, leading to an essentially zero systematic mismatch among uh, the uh, unit capacitors. And uh, in summary, our proposed synthesized methodology greatly improves the placement and routing matching. Besides, since the template-based cell are one-time setup compared with prior work, the proposed technology or the proposed technique adds only little manual effort. And the next, I will talk about the circuit implementation of our proposed first order and a second order synthesized the third sigma IDC. And uh, first, let's look at the circuit implementation of the first order VCO based ADC. 
And uh, here is the, the, the implementation of the VCO. And uh, it is implemented by uh, a GM cell and a pseudo differential uh, CCO pair. And here is the schematic of the uh, custom split driven inverter based GM cell. And uh, the GM cell directly drives two pseudo differential CCOs without requiring any uh, additional current source. And the common mode feedback is not required for the GM as the CCO provides low input impedance, which helps stabilize the output DC levels. And the choppers are introduced at the, uh, it is the input, the output of the GM cell and the input of the CDAC. And uh, 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 the choppers is used to mitigate the flick noise and the offset from the GM. And the deadband technique is also adopted to mute the chopping transient. And this custom, custom switch are simply implemented by a custom uh, complementary switch pair. And the boot, and the bootstrap uh, in the input node is also necessary uh, to ensure over 100 dB FFDR. And the double PFD based quantizer is proposed, uh, which is proposed in 2021 is adopted to provide four times resolution enhancement compared with the prior work. And the double PFD based quantizer is also uh, can also provide CDAC mismatch mitigation due to its natural clock averaging output pattern. And uh, the custom, custom uh, uh, NOR gate like the uh, uh, level shifter is used as a CCO buffer to minimize the leakage power. And uh, based on the first order, uh, first order noise shipping architecture, we add an extra few VCOs and the PFD to extend the noise shipping order to second order. And an extra uh, GM cell is also introduced to ensure the stability of the third sigma loop. And the current DAC converts the phase difference of the CCOs uh, to, uh, from uh, phase domain to current domain and does summation uh, with the feed forward GM2 uh, output current. And based on the first order and uh, based on the first, uh, first order uh, receive based ADC, the second order receive based ADC can share most of the libraries except the current current DAC here. So uh, we can, but we can, we, we should notice that uh, this one time setup library can be used to build even higher noise shaping ADC. And actually we have implemented uh, third order VCO based ADC by simply editing the code based on our existing work. However, the measurement result of the third order ADC did not achieve the performance as we expected. So we did not report uh, this work in uh, this year's CICC. And now I will present to you the measurement result. And uh, here is the die photo and the prototype first order and the second order ADC occupies an area of 0 0.045 and 0 0.6 millimeters square, uh, respectively, in uh, 28 nanometer CMOS process. And uh, the prototype first order EC operates at 28.8 uh, megahertz and consumes uh, 18 microvolts in total. And the second order ADC operates at 48 megahertz and consumes 55 microvolts in total. And the measurement output power spectrum density is shown here. And for the first order ADC, at uh, 24 kilohertz bandwidth, the ADC achieves uh, uh, 89.1 dB SNDR and 105 dB SFDR respectively. And for the tuning test, the response here shows that the intermodulation tone is placed at over 100 dB below the signal of interest, which proves a great linearity of the proposed ADC. And for the second order ADC at 200 kilohertz bandwidth, the ADC achieves 80.2 dB SNDR and uh, 96.2 SFDR, respectively. And for the tuning test, and, uh, the intermodulation is placed at over 97 dB below the signal of interest, which uh, proves a great linearity of the prototype ADC. And the measurement result shows the SFDR and the, uh, the SNDR and the SNR. Of course, uh, input amplitude is shown here, and our work achieves a dynamic range of uh, 89.1 dB for first order ADC and uh, 81.3 dB for second order ADC. 
and under different input frequency from one kilohertz to uh, 20 kilohertz of the first ADC, first order ADC, and uh, one kilohertz to uh, 50 kilohertz of the second order ADC, the SNDR variation of both ADC are within one dB. And uh, uh, both ADC shows a robust performance with less than 1.5 dB SNDR uh, variation across uh, six different chips. Now we and uh, now we compare our work with the state of the art. And uh, first we compare the existing synthesized ADC. And this work demonstrates an effective solution to improve the uh, feasibility of multi-specifications synthesized ADC in the high resolution region. And uh, compare with other synthesized ADC, our, our work achieves over 20 dB SNR improvement. And this work also demonstrates synthesized ADC to achieve inline performance with the state of the art manual designs. And uh, to our best knowledge, this work is the first to achieve over 180 dB shear form among not only synthesized, but also manually designed residual based ADC. This means that our proposed synthesized ADC uh, is has the great portion has the great potential to put to the practical use, and this comes to the conclusion of our presentation. And in this talk, I have presented to you a novel synthesized flow that uses only one unit, a universal library to synthesize ADCs for multiple specifications, and different specs can be simply realized by editing the code to modify the ADC parameters, which greatly improve the productivity and reduce the cost. A novel synthesized methodology is also proposed to help the placement and routing, which significantly uh, improve the linearity of the, uh, of the ADC and improve the SNDR of the ADC. And this merits allow our proposed synthesized ADC to achieve over 20 dB SNDR uh, improvement compared to the prior synthesized ADCs. And this work also achieved state-of-the-art energy efficient and is the first one to achieve over 180 dB shear forms among resale-based ADCs. And uh, as a final, I do want to mention a caveat. And I guess you might already notice that our synthesized flow and the methodology seems only talking about layout. So you might ask how to, how about the schematic sizing? So how about the simulation? Or more generally, how about the design closer? So to, the, to, to this end, it is true that our flow basically focuses just on the layout. The closer is still performance, uh, is also is still uh, performed uh, manually. But our goal in this work is try to just make the layout flow more streamlined compared to the existing work. In fact, we are not losing any features because the design closure automation problems is also exists for other designs. So, and uh, we also admit that to ensure a over 100 dB linearity of the ADC, many analog argument cells are added to the library. However, it also should be noted that once the layout of the analog argument cells are completed, all designs can share this layout in the library. So compared with full manual work, our proposed synthesized flow still greatly reduced the manual effort. Actually, we can say that this work tries to find an optimization between the performance and the manual, manual effort. And I think it will be our plan in the future to look into extending the automa automation to a higher level. Okay, uh, thanks for your attention. I think so much. This was excellent. Um, uh, I hope uh, some people here would have questions for you. Okay, okay. But if not, um, I'm sure you have some questions. Um, so yeah, I think Tim Edwards has a question. Yeah, I was wondering if you could share some of the results of your third order and if you have any uh, comments about what makes the third order 
or, or why why the results get worse as you increase the order? Is it is it because of the size of the design and the difficulty with the uh, placement and routing? Uh, actually, uh, the uh, 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 okay. So this is a very, very good question. So uh, actually, uh, actually, uh, the, the trade off between the thermal noise and and the uh, and the power, we 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 don't we don't have a very good trade off of the thermal noise and the, the power. So uh, for the third order with your based ADC, uh, the SNDR is not achieved as we expected. So it's only seven, 70 dB uh, SNDR at, uh, I remember it's 600 kilohertz bandwidth. So it is not, it, it is not for, for, for the sizing and it is not, not it uh, it is not for the uh the, uh the synthesized flow and the methodology. It's just for the 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 it, it's just the the reason is just for the uh the the trade the bad trade off because the thermal noise is 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 uh, is just uh, uh higher than we expect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right, I think Ken has uh, some questions. Yeah, hi, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yep. Yeah, yeah, go cool. Ahead. Um, I just have a question about the, um, the actual like uh, scripting implementation that you used for the low level custom analog cells. I'm assuming you started probably from like a, a sized schematic um, but then I'm curious, uh, did you use Innovis at all on those low level design cells or did you have some sort of like skill or open access interface in order to generate the, the unit cells um, for the layout? Oh, okay, okay, Th thanks for your question. And uh, yes, for, for this, this analog, an analog part, actually we, we, we do it uh, just for uh, manually design. But uh, actually, uh, this uh, this analog part uh, it, it is not uh, very difficult to to design this analog part because this GM cell is just a uh, inverter based GM cell and this is also just uh, a basic uh, uh, com complementary uh, complementary switches and this this is just a classic uh, bootstrap switch and uh, I, I admit that it it it, it must uh, take us. Uh, uh, several several days to uh, several days or maybe uh, one week two week to to design and optimize. But uh, once we we have finished uh, this analog cell, uh, for example, for the second order uh, vessel based ADC, once we finish these cells, we can if we want to build a third order third order, uh, we can just uh, share th this this analog cells. And uh, for the uh, uh, inverse, uh, we we just uh, uh, make uh, we we just uh, embedded uh, this uh, analog analog part to a uh, uh, to a block, and uh, the routing is just and the routing is uh, uh, is done by the APR tools. Okay, thank you. Oh, okay. So uh, just regarding that, how um, how. How large are the um, GM cells, and how much time does it take to generate all the augmented cells you, you're making here? Uh, okay, so thanks for your question. Do, do you mean the how how large of this GM cell? Yeah, yeah I mean they are they are not. Uh, I mean I understand abstracting the issue, right? Like those cells need to require uh, um, high attention, so you spend good time doing that. So how do you iterate in your design, right? You're gonna make a lot of the blocks are automated, and then you created the first uh, version of the GM cell, and then you built. Uh, I'm guessing you built everything together. So, uh, so what is the process, and how much time does it require to do this? Uh, do do you mean just just for the GM cell? Yeah, actually for the GM cell. I guess. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Just for the GM cell, actually. Uh, I think it's not it's not uh it's not very hard to 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 design a, a GM cell because 
because the, the schematic of the GM cell is very is very it's very it's very simple. So yeah, I mean it should be pretty simple, but then um supposing this is being used as a standard cell, right? So it needs to be standard cell compatible and right. Or uh, is it like a macro? Oh, standard cell compatible. Yes, it, I, I mean the, the height of, of, of this cell is it, it is just the multiple height of, of the standard cell, but uh, but the, the uh, but the, the uh, how say but the uh, uh, but the specific uh, layout and the, the, the sizing is it just uh, is is uh, it, it's just optimized by uh, by by ma manually work and sure. uh, and. Uh, uh, I, I think in the future maybe we will uh, uh, we will create a, a, a P cell to to make the uh, GM cell more automatically uh, designed. Okay, sounds great. How about the CDAC? Oh, okay, the CDAC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the CDAC. The C the CDAC is also we 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 just uh, I I I I do not. I do not uh I do not put the 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 the, the uh the layout uh of the CDAC uh, uh in the slides, but the, the layout of the CDAC is is also uh is also um uh, uh manually uh, layout. And uh it, this is uh, the uh it is uh, this is because uh, we want to uh make the the the, the CDAC mismatch uh, uh small enough to uh, uh, to to realize the uh, over 100 uh, dB FFDR. Sure. So I, I guess the question is, how much time does that require, right? Uh, I, I'm guessing if you're going from 28 to let's say 130 or GF 180, uh, how much time would this require to to port? Uh, I'm so, sorry. So 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 I'm, I'm guessing in terms of uh, time spent uh, making this layout oh, and, okay. and uh, portability of your design to different technology, how much time would it require to build this uh, in a different node? I, I think uh, since the, the CDAC is just a mom cap, so mm -hmm. in different, uh, so the process uh, mitigation, I, I, I think it just, uh, I think it will not take a, a very long time, maybe one day, two days, maybe it's okay to, to process mitigation. Um, uh, so process migration, sorry. The whole design or the CDAC? Oh, I mean the CDAC. I mean, even the CDAC. I mean the CDAC. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I agree that for the, uh, for the GMSL, it may take a longer time for the, uh, for, uh, for the process migration. Okay. Yeah, so in open up itself, we've generated P cells. Uh, I mean, not the GM cell, uh, like the whole GM cell, but we are trying to build a little more than one transistor, multiple transistors as P cells. And we're trying to build uh, more, you know, customized circuits like that. Uh, but it, it feels like taking a whole uh, CDAC or GM cell as a P cell and port it across different nodes can take a lot of time to do. Okay, okay. So so you, you have already done the, the P cell, right? Uh, we built in, uh, you know, small P cells, like oh. let's say parallel transistors, um, you know, folded cascode, deep pairs and stuff like that. And then we can just arrange them all together okay. but um yeah just curious what you were doing okay th this is just our future plan but but we we do not start yet yeah okay uh, sounds good any other questions from the audience okay yes. i guess not um so do you have any plans to publish your work on GitHub on, a, on an open design, uh, open PDK design or map to open design, uh, PDK? Uh, publications for the PDK? 
Uh, I'm guessing my question is, can you, uh, are you planning to uh, publish your work or push it to GitHub so other people can reproduce it or reuse it? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think last time you have asked me this question and uh, I, because th this work is cooperated with, with, with the company. So, uh -huh. they, they, yeah, okay, so, so they, they, they do not allow, allow, allow us to, to upload the, the, the detailed uh, designs to, to the, the GitHub. I see. Okay, sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, I, I just- uh, No, no worries. <laughs> Um, any questions? All right, so um, I guess um, that's about it. Thanks so much, Yi, and uh, welcome to the Analog Working Group. Okay. Um, there's a couple updates uh, we work working on on the um, with the students from the Google Summer of Code. So hopefully in the next week they can provide the updates on their framework. Uh, they are building with GDS Factory and Open Road. Um, we also have we started the chip on with uh, Boris here. Um, so yeah. uh, hopefully people can uh, join yeah. as mentors and. Uh, you're welcome to join as well, Yi. Uh, okay, okay, no problem. Okay, and uh, please reach out if you if you'd like to present your work or if you have any updates on your uh, framework as well. Okay, um, uh, that that's open to everyone, by the way. So uh, thanks everyone and have a good day. Okay, okay, have have a good day. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye. -bye. Okay, bye. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.